Hi, welcome to Yoga Rocks Box. I'm here with Coral Brown and this year instead of throwing um, various topics at the teachers without telling them first, which is what I like to do, I'm asking the teachers what they would like to talk about to see how that goes. And I asked Coral and Coral is very excited to talk about stories. So tell us a little bit. Tell us a story. Tell us a story about it's, it's, stories. That's that's the whole. Um, that's a great opening. Everybody loves a good story, <laughs> and um, we we get attached to the story, whether it's about somebody else, about our, our culture, or about ourselves. And um, you know, it's part of our culture with entertainment. Is we go to the stories, the movies, or we watch our stories, or you know, the soap operas, or whatever it might be. Um, entertainment a way of carrying us out of our reality and into another realm where there's this kind of Cinderella essence or this trace you know, it back a little bit farther it really comes down to different forms of mythology and archetype um, the hero the victim you know Joseph Campbell and Carl Jung sort of uh, approach if you want to go deeper with it um, those are great sources but just I've been focusing a lot lately in the practice on our own personal stories so what I noticed over the years teaching is People, I get feedback that people love when I tell a story throughout the class. So I'll tell the story of, say, Hanuman throughout the whole class while we're, we're doing that pose and tell the mythology of Hanuman and, and um, his archetype and the facets of his persona that, you know, we love the story because they remind us of ourselves, um, about courage and faith and devotion and taking the leap of faith. And so that inspires us and that motivates us and realizing oh, people like this why do they like it it reminds them of themselves or it gives them you know just a different perspective and um and then i started thinking well what's the story that we come with before we start attaching to some other story that we hear out in the culture or entertainment or in the books and um our you know our stories start once upon a time as soon as we're born and it's a cumulative um gathering of information and processing and translating and then storing that information but the problem is when we develop we don't necessarily develop the story we keep the story the same as it was so say we're five years old and, and an event occurs traumatic or, or wonderful uh, we have a, a way of processing that as a five-year-old um, if someone else is there a 10 a 15 year old they have another way of processing it Fast forward 15, 20 years later, we've encapsulated that memory, that experience, as that five-year-old saw it. So often there's inaccurate perception at that point, because we're only using the faculties that we have, that we've developed so far. So, and then years later, we're relying on that same version of the story to inform us, and that information tells us how to respond or react to a given situation that's familiar or, or similar to that original one. Uh, and then usually it takes a moment where something alerts us to change the story, to rewrite it, to uh, become more the author and the editor versus the narrator. And we realize that maybe it's a point where, you know, we hear ourselves telling the story for like the 108th time. Oh, how did you get this scar? You know, and you're telling the story. And then if you were to really stop in more objectively and as an adult through the lens you have now, look at the situation you, you might see that it's very different than the way you originally perceived it and the way you've been telling yourself and existing with that information as your base all this time. So the art of, of what's your story? Rewriting your story. And how? Practically, through asana, through meditation, through pranayama, through just mental practices, what's the best way to yes. start to unravel it? <laughs> yes, it's one of those. Yes. So, I work as a psychotherapist as well, and there's an approach called narrative therapy. So it's, you know, it's been researched enough and, and practiced and modified that there is, even if it's just journaling, there's all different approaches is the answer. Um, but first, this first step is awareness. And yoga, one of the definition, it's skill and action, mindfulness. So that moment where we flip the switch and say, wait a second, is this story real? Is this true? How did it happen in my perception then? If I were to look at it now, would the two be the same? Um, or another approach is to then, the next step, I guess, would be to, to alter your role through your perspective. So if you were the victim, if you were abused, if you were traumatized, um, taken advantage of, take, your power was taking, taken away, and then now you've lived a life with a certain belief system based on that, and then characteristics and behaviors follow that belief system and, and it becomes cyclical 
And this vortex, right, skill and action is observing and seeing, witnessing everything that's spiraling around you, noticing it first and then changing it, implementing the change where I say, I'm going to want to change my perspective. And in that story, instead of being the victim, I'm going to be the hero or I'm going to be the one that makes a difference or makes a change. And maybe that ensues and you end up writing something to, to alert other people to the experience you've had and that they could have too. Um, or, you know, maybe it's, it's through a new relationship and you redefine yourself in that new relationship without the old story. And it takes time and it takes practice, just like yoga asana it takes practice. First, it's skillful awareness dig a hole, dig it deep, the same one, and don't stop. So it's like asana for the mind in a way. It's, it's like practices, just like we do on the mat, but just working with your mind. And if you people get very attached or not to negative, they become attached to negative stuff that they, they, they in, a, in, a, in a nice way, it becomes, mm -hmm. the negative stuff becomes something that really supports them and they really become very involved in it as part of their exactly. persona. So how to let go of this stuff? Right. Whatever you feed will grow. So are you feeding, you know, the, the, the wolf? Or are you feeding the, the, the hungry ghost? Are you feeding your heart, your spirit? And usually once we find yoga, we get that nurturing and that nourishment that it gives us. And then value and worth and self-awareness, everything starts to shift, change and, and, and grow. And it's, similar to an asana in the physical body, form and function. We often visualize or see a form or a story and see we have to look like that or be like that, but it doesn't necessarily suit or fit our function. Our body's physical form may not be able to go into this particular pose because of the way our pelvis and our, you know, our femur bones work together. Or the way that we've been born into this world, that might not be our dharma, our our purpose, our duty, our path. And so all of this storytelling and rewriting, revealing what's real from unreal. You know, these basic yogic principles that just permeate every part of our psyche and our culture, you can, it can all be tied back to the texts. So the study of yoga, whether you start with asana, pranayama meditation, and bounce back and forth or do all of it, nutrition, it, it all gives you pieces of the whole, of the puzzle, so. Wherever you start, you end up, you know, gathering and gathering until you, you, you do. Your story changes. And that's when people do teacher trainings or immersions or a retreat, come here and, and have the opportunity to just plug into themselves and unplug from everything else and really look. That's that first step. So seeing clearly. Yeah. Polishing. Krishna Das always says polishing the mirror, you know, of the heart so that the reflection is true. It's not distorted. It's not based on the culture, the society, or an old perception. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Coral Bell. That was wonderful. Thanks. Well, we were like looking for this shift. And you can get it in a week retreat. You can start to get a shift. Yeah, you can get it. Go to a public class every week. Just do. start paying attention. Start breathing. Start unhinging your jaw. These little, little breadcrumbs that you keep dropping, follow them. <laughs> Pay attention. So you can change yourself. You can. <laughs> Change your mind. Thank you very much, Absolutely. Cole Bell. Thank you, thank you for Namaste. an amazing week. Thank you for having me. Again, very welcome, Colbert at Yoga Rock. See you next year. <laughs>